can a large hedge fund or an institutional bank undertake a trade in the foreign exchange market where the volumes run into trillions of dollars on a yearly basis? There are some pre-trade requirements that have to be put in place in the trade life cycle. These include preventing and managing credit risk and market risk that the bank might be exposed to on account of foreign exchange trades. Hello everybody, this is the video waiting for the, sec the third video in the FX trade life cycle, the pre-trade steps that are involved in the FX trade life cycle. The interbank FX market is an OTC market. The over-the-counter market is a high-volume market with each transaction running into millions of dollars. In fact, if they don't mention it, it is automatic automatically assumed that the ticket size is a million dollars worth of trade. It's a very volatile market with prices changing at the blink of an eye. And this is largely because FX markets are exposed to global political as well as macroeconomic events. The interbank market is a very speculative market where traders, banks and hedge funds make millions of dollars of profit just on currency speculation. The market structure is defined as a decentralized trading, that is the OTC market, the over-the-counter market. This is dominated by institutional investors like mutual funds, hedge funds, pension funds, as well as insurance companies and of course commercial banks which have a very significant participation in the foreign exchange markets. Let's go back to my favorite hedge fund. Hurry Hedge Fund is trading with Goldman Sachs and the trade is that it has shorted USD Euro 10 million. So USD is the base currency over here. Euro is the reference currency. That means they have sold USD against Euro at a rate of 0 0.8550. As you can understand from this, Hurry Hedge Fund has directly in, interacted and entered into the contract with Goldman Sachs. This could have been done through a broker or a dealer, but there is no exchange involved. And therefore, there's a direct exposure for Hedge, Hurry Hedge Fund to GS and vice versa. Such a contract where you're able to identify and quantify the party to the trade is called as counterparties to the trade. It's very important to understand the meaning of counterparties to the trade because if you don't understand that you'll never be able to fix the FX risk management policy of the bank. Hurry Hedge Fund Hurry Hedge Fund has shorted USD Euro 10 million. This is the original trade. So I always like to explain with the example of practical uh, trades that take place in the OTC market, in the interbank FX market. This means that Hari Hedge Fund has shorted USD Euro. They have to deliver Euro and they have to receive USD. I'm correct, right? It has to deliver what you have sold and you have to receive what you have bought. That's wrong. Oh my God, the spelling is wrong again. All right, this is totally wrong. In fact, Hari Hedge Fund, because they have sold USD Euro 10 million, they have to deliver the currency that they have sold, that is USD, and they will receive EUR. Goldman Sachs has entered into the reverse trade, right? It's a counterparty to the trade. So the mirror image of the transaction that is, they have long USD Euro. That means they will deliver Euro and they will receive USD, right? That makes sense. Yeah, that's not wrong. That's totally correct. Am I right or am I right? Yeah. A hurry hedge fund. What would happen if after entering into the trade of shorting USD Euro 10 million delivers the currency that they have shorted, that's USD, but they have and they're supposed to receive euro, right? They have delivered the USD, that's right. But they have failed to receive the euro from the counterparty. Similarly, with GS, they have an equal risk. They are long USD euro and Gol Goldman Sachs has supposed to, under the contract, deliver the euro and receive uh, USD, right? If whatever you're long, you're supposed to receive. Whatever you're short, you're supposed to deliver. They have delivered the euro as per the contractual terms, but Hurry Hedge Fund has not given them the dollars. They have not received the dollars. This means that both Hurry Hedge Fund as well as GS are exposed to each other. This risk is called as a default risk. Default risk comes under the title age of credit risk, which is a combination of borrower risk as well as counterparty risk. Borrower risk is the risk that the borrowing customer has defaulted on the EMIs or on the interest payments 
counterparty risk is this example that I just gave to you, where one of the counterparties of the trade has participated and delivered as per the settlements, but the counterparty has not done the same. How can this be mitigated? Pre-trade requirements. First thing, know your customer, know your counterparty over here, KYC. An elaborate agreement has to be signed between Hari Hedge Fund and GS before even entering into the trade to define what can be the maximum amount of transactions, volume of transactions, volume of trade, value of transaction that they can take up against each other. This is called as counterparty transaction limits. For example, the first factor, size of the balance sheet. So the larger the balance sheet of the counterparty, you can take a higher exposure. Let's, let's say, for example, in India, the largest bank is State Bank of India, and therefore counterparties to State Bank of India are willing to take on high exposures because they have a large balance sheet counterpart counterparty. A second factor could be the total USD exposure itself within that currency-wise exposure. A third factor could be, what about if the bank is a part of a large group of banks, like it happens in many Asian countries? You have not just one bank, but many, multiple kinds of banks within the conglomerate. You then have a per business currency exposure. Okay, do you remember this, Mr. and Mrs. Smith? <laughs> of course, the iconic movie uh, featuring Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. And you know what the story was, right? The story was that they lived under the same roof, but worked for different countries as spies. So let's see, what happens if Hari Hedge Fund... Has, has as its star trader, Mrs. Smith, and Mr. Smith is the star trader for GS. Is this credit risk? Nah. Is this market risk? Nah. Is this operational risk? Mm, I don't know. Okay. Nothing says that you can't have traders working in the opposite, uh, in, in, in the other organization. But let's say, for love of each other, Hari Hedge Fund and GS entered into trades only with each other. Then it would definitely be falling under the concept of operational risk. Market risk is the risk that the fund is exposed to price volatility. Let's say Hari Hedge Fund has a USD 100 million portfolio where it is long USD Euro. And market risk, that is the risk of prices moving against the trading position. So they have a trade of long USD Euro, USD weakens. Okay. Uh, because of actually no news at all, USD weakens. So there's a stop loss that is triggered. If on the other hand, the fund is short USD Euro, then the USD strengthens because of global war cries like we're having right now. I mean, for the last two years, every February, we're having a war cry from different parts of the world. The USD strengthens because everybody prefers to invest in the USD in terms of uncertainty and risk. The stop loss gets triggered. A prime broker is one who works for institutional investors and normally they're the ones who bring together all the institutional investors and counterparties to the trade. They manage the end-to-end -end FX trade cycle of their clients. More about prime brokerage in the next video. Prime brokers also provide cash management and uh, leverage facilities for their clients so that clients can take in larger value of trades. They provide the settlement services. Also, regulators like Central Bank of the country focus on the currency stability. So all these participants come into the ream of how currencies have to be managed. If it's a fixed currency conversion, there's a daily announcement of exchange rate like USD AED, the uh, Abu Dhabi uh, Central Bank, the, sorry, the I'm sorry, Central Bank of the UAE, not the Abu Dhabi, Central Bank of the UAE, announces the currency conversion at 3.67 and that never changes at all. If on the other hand, it's a free market economics, they intervene in the forex markets to provide domestic currency stability by taking long or short positions depending upon whether the domestic currency is strengthening or weakening dramatically. Are you looking forward to the next video? Yes. It's about how the prices are coated. See you there. Bye.